Good morning. Welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Park Hunter, and we're delighted to have you with us on this first Sunday of November, this All Saints Sunday. Uh, we have a lot of things going on, very full service today, and lots to celebrate. Uh, I want to begin with some thank yous. Uh, first of all, last Sunday was our consecration service for the building project. Uh, it was a wonderful Sunday. Thank you to everybody that helped with that. It was uh, good to have Pastor Ginny back with us and have some guests from the conference here. Today we are blessed. Uh, uh, we have uh, Reverend Barb Kell with us. Uh, uh, Barb has served as a pastor, a United Methodist pastor in the Northern Illinois Conference and is retired now. Uh, and uh, she made the mistake of telling me once that she still had the itch to preach once in a while. So we like to uh, give her the opportunity and uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to share with us, Barb. Thanks for coming. This week, uh, we've got some things going on, some dinner of some kind. Uh, Craig, you want to tell us a little bit about that? We're doing the annual chili supper. And uh, 4.30 to 6.30, weather's supposed to be pretty much what it is outside today. So yes. go vote. Come here, warm up with some chili. Uh, we do uh, have tickets available back there uh, in the narthex. Uh, Paul Sampson is sitting by the ticket table right now. Uh, and we'll have somebody there after the service as well. Uh, so if you want to pre-buy your tickets, that'll help us a little bit with the food planning. Um, Wednesday evening, our SOAR programs, youth programs, will be meeting. Thursday uh, night, choir rehearses, and they're practicing for the cantata now. Um, what time does the cantata practice start? 7.30. Still, 7.30? Yeah, seven. This, week. this week. This week. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Jessica, you want to tell us about our shoebox mission? Morning. In your bulletin, you'll have a blue insert that has information about our shoebox ministry that is starting today. Um, if you have your own box, you can grab some handouts out on a table in the narthex. If you want to grab a box, um, we have some out there. If they're all gone and you want to grab a box, um, there'll be more there next week. And simple, if you simply want to just donate either items, um, you can bring those back to church. And there's a list of items on the back that we will um, be putting into boxes. The youth do a packing party. And if you simply do not want to do anything, but give us a donation to go and buy what we need, um, you can fill out the bottom of the blue slip and stick it in the um, offering plate. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and this year we are going to have our boxes go to our local boys and girls clubs again. Yep. We did that last year and they sure appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and begin our service by greeting each other with the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. An affirmation is a, a, a celebration and an affirmation of who we are. We are individuals, we are unique, and God has made us that way. So put up your thumb. I am somebody. Look at your neighbor. You are somebody. Both thumbs. We all are somebodies. We are the saints of the church. We are the saints of the church. Amen. Amen.
Our reading today is from Hebrews 11, 32 to 35, and 12, 1 through 2. In your pew Bibles, that's uh, 1097. And what more could I say, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped from the sword, won strength out of weakness, and became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with the perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, degraded into shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. That ends the reading, uh, children, is that it? Would the children come forward and come up for here? We'll sit right in front of the altar this morning. B-I-B-L-E. What does that spell? Bible. I used to live across the street from the church, and I came to Sunday school and vacation Bible school, and I sang in the choir, and I was confirmed here, and I was in youth group. And it, this Bible says kids' Bible, and it's the one I'm reading on. It's not that the words aren't good, but it puts in the devotion so we understand. What we try to do in Sunday school and what Jessica tries to do with all of her stuff and all of the teachers that are here... And the Logos on Wednesday is to make it clear of how we can live and follow Jesus. Now, this morning, what did I ask you to do for the call to worship? Raise your thumb. And I, I love to do craft work. My mom had me do craft work. Look what your thumb can be. All sorts of stuff, can't it? Now, we're talking about saints today. And they read a diverse number of saints and all their names. And we're going to light candles for people that we remember. But who's a saint? Pastor Park, come up. Jessica, come on up. Are these people saints? <laughs> My halo. Now look at all those people up in the balcony. Are they saints? Is the bell choir and the, the music people, are they saints? Yep. You don't know what a saint is? Well, look out in the congregation. Maybe you'll find one there. Look at all the kids that are here. Do you want to know something? Everybody's a saint. You don't have to be dead. You don't have to be perfect. But you have to sort of read your Bible. And you know you're different. God has given you each gifts to be different and, and to follow Jesus. And some people play bells. Some people sing. Some people greet. Some people clean up. We need everybody here. So, put up your thumb. I am somebody, you guys. I am somebody. I am a saint of this church. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, God, for calling us all to be your saints. Help us to understand how to be present with people and be with the people that lead this worship and lead the children and lead this church in mission. Amen. Thank you for coming up. confession this morning can be found in the uh, program or on the screen overhead. Please uh, read it with me. The saints of the past inspired us with their faith. 
built up the kingdom of God in our community and prepared the way of the Lord. Now, the great cloud of witnesses are assembled to watch us run the straight path. But instead of stretching ourselves, body and soul, to reach for God's love, we are flabby in our faith and trust. Instead of passing the baton to the next generation of Christians, we cling tightly to our own privileges. Instead of claiming the crown of eternal glory, we stumble in our own sin. Lord, forgive us, we pray. Help our unbelief. Grant us courage and strength that we may not run life's race in vain. Sisters and brothers, saints in training, God's grace abounds. We are forgiven and we are encouraged and we are strengthened. With Christ's help, we shall claim the victory and pass on the faith. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to invite uh, Becky now to come forward uh, and represent our Stephen ministry and lead us in our All Saints Litany today. Thank you. I'm going to start off with just sharing a little information with you this morning. Um, our church is a Stephen ministry church, and we have been a Stephen ministry church for 10 years now. And what that means is that we have an awesome group of caring, loving individuals who have been trained to care for you, each and every one of you. So um, 10 years ago, we started this, and I was one of 12, and Jenny was our training leader. And then several of us since then have gone on to leadership training in Stephen Ministry, and we have had several more classes over the years, and we have, I would say, trained between 25 and 30 people in our congregation. And for me, that has been just such a huge blessing because that means well, I have Jenny and I worked together to do that training until she left, and then other Stephen leaders and I have done it since then. And it's just a huge blessing to get to know people on that level. That We do 50 hours of training, and so you get to know someone pretty well when you spend that much time together. Um, I want to tell you about this wonderful caring ministry from a different side, though. So almost two years ago, my 96-year-old mother was in a memory care facility, and she had had Alzheimer's at that point in time for about 15 years. So that, and that care center was six hours away. Um, also, about at that same time, my husband decided to retire, and I think it was the same week that we made that decision that my job said, we got this huge new contract and I knew that I was gonna be quadrupling my staff and quadrupling my workload. And about that time, then my mom passed away. And all these things were just becoming a little overwhelming for me. And I think it was probably showing. And um, Nancy Quinlisk, who is our, um, at that time, was the person who um, matched up Stephen ministers with care receivers. Nancy called me and she said, Becky, I think you need a Stephen minister. And I said, you know, Nancy, you're probably right. I, I could probably use that. So um, this, that Stephen minister that was assigned to me was someone who looked me in the eye and said, no, Becky, how are you really? She wanted to know. She was loving, she was caring, she was sharing her faith with me. She was an excellent listener. And I knew that she was always praying for me, constantly. We met every week for an hour, probably for almost a year. And I tell you, that hour in my week was such a huge blessing. I was crazy busy, and she knew that. And we, we had our time, and we would kind of fly in, and we would text each other and say, okay, yeah, it's going to work today. But it was such a calm, quiet time that we could get together and just talk and pray together. And 
she became just such a trusted friend to me. Um, she allowed me to experience God's grace through her loving presence. And that's what Stephen ministers do. She gave me her time, and I was really, truly blessed by that. So I know that all of us, I'm really good at it, and I'm sure many of you are really good at it too, putting on that mask that says, yep, I'm okay. I don't need anybody else. I can handle it all by myself. We're all good at that. But I want you to know that if you're walking through something and it would benefit you to have a Stephen Minister, Stephen Minister come alongside you, we have them here in our church, and we would love to come alongside you. The way you find out about that is we have these blue name tags. Everybody with a blue name tag is a Stephen Minister or a Stephen Leader. So find someone with a blue name tag and let them know that you would like to find out more about Stephen Ministry. You can always talk to Pastor Park or Paul or our church staff to know more about Stephen Ministry as well, and we would certainly love to serve you in that way. So thank you. Now we'll move on to our All Saints um, Litany of Remembering. So if you would join me in the litany. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, who has made known to us our participation in eternal life. We give thanks to God, who is known to us as endless love and sustaining hope. Through Jesus' life, teaching, death, and resurrection, we have come to know the abundant life God bestows. As death could not hold God's love, so we too are set free by the love of God. So then, what do we say to all of this? Can we be separated from the love of God made known in Jesus Christ? We are convinced that nothing, not death, not life, not things present, not things to come, nothing in all creation is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. This is the faith in which we stand. In this faith, we give thanks to God for the lives of those who from our faith community who have died and now share eternal life in the fullness of God's presence. As I read the names, if there are family members of these individuals who are here, we would welcome you to come up and light a candle in remembrance of your family member. And then if there are any others who would care to light a candle in memory of someone, please come up and let me know their name and I will announce their name and we can help you light a candle. Phyllis Rausch. Susan Gilster. Dave Schumacher. Karen Benz. Katherine Anderson. Dwayne Welk, Welkie, I'm sorry. And if there's anyone else, please come forward. Kelly Heinick, Vern Phillips, George Early, Leonard Heinrichs, Bernice Celius, Lenore Jones, Reg and Vi McMullen. We light a final candle and take a moment of silence to remember all of the saints who have passed before us. We rejoice in this assurance. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Thanks be to God.
It's good to be here. I was baptized in the church, confirmed in the church, married in the church, and um, it's fun to come home once in a while and see some smiling faces I recognize and, and meet new faces that are here. Today is All Saints Sunday. What do you think you find out when you Google saints? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, but if you go to Wikipedia, a saint historically known as a hallow is a person who is recognized as having exceptional degree of holiness or likeness and closeness to God. Now, the Catholic Church has regs and regulations of dead people who become saints. We don't. Actually, the Episcopal Church has a high holy day for John and Charles Wesley, which we don't even do. So it sometimes is hard to recognize those who have gone before us. To hallow is to make holy or sacred, to sanctify. The adjective in the Lord's Prayer means to holy, consecrate, sacred, revered. The noun form of hallow, hallow tide, is a synonym for saint. Which brings us to this Sunday. Halloween is All Hallows Eve, the night before All Saints Day. Many, many years ago, there were Halloween pranks, but they were done by non-Catholics to the Catholics because they were making fun of them at the vigil of All Saints Day. In the 8th century, the church appointed a special day for All Saints Day. And then the next day was to honor the to-be saints, All Souls Day. The feast was to bring people hope. Now, this was the time of the year when the harvest was in, the earth was barren, it's drab and looks like death, the snow hasn't come to brighten stuff up. Now, they were trying to get people to understand that there was hope. Now, there was also a time of pagan festivals, bonfires, apples, nuts, and parties, and they sort of melded all together eventually. But I believe all of you, young, old, long-time members, first-time attenders, you are all saints. Now, does that mean I expect you to be perfect? No. When you read the stories of the saints, you quickly find out they were not cloistered monks or nuns, and they had real life issues, real problems. So I wanted to take the letters from the name saints and look at each letter of how we can, as John Wesley said, move on to perfection. S, a saint is someone who meets God in silence, which is funny, you've got pictures of little girls. You know silence is very short-lived sometimes. <laughs> Before cell phones, I used to tell people, I love to drive, because that was the time I prayed. And they said, I don't want to meet you on the road with your eyes closed. I, well, you can pray with your eyes open. What you need is quiet time, and now that you have a cell phone, the car is no longer that quiet. If you look at Elisha, he had won a contest with the prophets of Baal, and they lost. So 3,000 of them died. Now, Queen Jezebel, they were her prophets. So she was after Elisha. So he goes into the desert and he wished he was dead. He's the most wonderful person. He did what God asked and he won. But he's hiding. And he, gets, he has a messenger tap him and says, get up and eat. There's food provided. After twice, he goes to the wilderness to Mount Horeb. It takes 40 days and nights. And he goes to a cave. And Elisha says, and God says to Elisha, why are you here? And Elisha shares his pity party with God, who is not interested in the least. And God said, just wait. So we read um, in 1 Kings 19, 11. The Lord said, go out and stand in the mountain before the Lord. And the Lord passed by. A very great wind tore through the mountains and broke apart the stones before the Lord. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound. Thin, quiet. When Elisha heard it, he wrapped his face in his coat, and he went out and stood at the cave's entrance. A voice said to him, Why are you here, Elisha? We have all known times of distress, and the Stevens ministers are there to help you in distress. We've all known times we wished we could just die. God is with us. And those are not words just to appease. Elisha communicated with God his deepest anguish and torment. 
Many times our prayers are more like a to-do list. God, da -da 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 -da, amen, and you go off. But where we get to understand God's presence is in the silence after we've laid everything out like Elijah before the Lord. And in the thin quiet, God speaks to us. The thing that makes a saint is they listen to God. A saint finds time to be alone in the silence. Elijah had lost his purpose of life, and God gives him a new one. In the silence, we find our purpose for life. A. A saint sees God in all the world's awesomeness. Moses had been saved as an infant in the bulrushes, but he didn't know he was Jewish till he was an adult. And then he kills an Egyptian, runs away from Egypt, and in the desert he finds a well. And at the well, these seven daughters of a Midianite priest are chased away by shepherds. He chases the shepherds away, and he helps them to water their flock. And so Moses goes with these seven women, and he marries one of the daughters, Zipporah. And he has a son named Jershon, which means I am an immigrant and a foreigner, a sojourner. Now, a long, the Bible says a long time passes. And then in Exodus 3, Moses was taking care of the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the Midianite priest. He led the flock out of the edge of the desert, and he came to God's mountain called Horeb. The Lord's messenger appeared to him in a flame of fire in the middle of a bush. Moses saw that the bush was in flames, but it didn't burn up. Then Moses said to himself, let me check out this amazing sight and find out why the bush isn't burning up. Commentaries said it probably took about five minutes to notice the bush was on fire, but nothing else was on fire, so his flock wasn't in danger. But it stayed looking on fire, and maybe it took some looking into. And this is the same Mount Horeb that he will come back to to get the Ten Commandments. We know that when God has appeared to people in the Bible, they go back to that place. Because if God came once, God can come again. And so Mount Horeb was a place that Elijah had gone to and Moses goes to. Do you see things in your mind's eye that you just re know that it, it's just like they're real? It is so clear to you. When we first got married, my husband David asked me where the Onalaska Dam was. I said, well, you go down the highway, you go to where the old standpipe used to be, and you'll find the trail down across the railroad tracks. And he has told me over the years that was less than useful. <laughs> Number one, he didn't know what a standpipe was. And two, he certainly didn't know where it used to be. How many old timers give directions like that? Had I be shown him the place, had I talked about it, or ood and ah, that this is the spot, he would have known. We are the people that lead, need to let people know where those sacred spots are. We need to lead them back to the Mount Horebs of where God has been in our life. We are the lives and the action. We are the open Bible that people read. So what message are you giving them from God? We meet God in so many places, in times when things rush back. Pine Lake, the River City Park, and the, the lacrosse and the gardens and the rotary lights. What are the places that you want to share of God's awesomeness with people? I. A saint is interested in others. I think you're in that picture, Doug Huggett. Um, I love this story in Matthew 20, 29. As Jesus and his disciples were going out of Jericho, a large crowd followed him. When two blind men sat by the road, heard that Jesus was passing by, they shouted, Show us mercy, Lord, son of David. But the crowd scolded them and said, Shh, be quiet. They were shouting louder, Show us mercy, Lord, son of David. Jesus stops in his tracks and calls to them, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, we want to see, they replied. Jesus had compassion on them, touched their eyes. Immediately they were able to see, and they followed him. What I marvel about this story is two things. One is the crowd had seen Jesus, but they didn't want anybody else to come. They got through the door, and they were closing it. Nobody else could get there. But Jesus opens the door. 
And he stops in his practice and he says, what do you want me to do for you? Now there's two blind men by the road. If you had a deformity, if you were limping, if you were blind, you could not go in the temple, you could not worship God. And I think Jesus healed as many people as he did so that they would have a personal relationship with God in worship. Now, if it were me, I'd say, ah, blind men, they need to see. Touch their eyes and be on your way. But Jesus gives them dignity. He gives them the power to name and claim what they need. Saints just don't help. They just don't listen to God in quiet. They look at the scope of things, and they begin to build hope and give people dignity and power to choose. David and I were co-pastors in Aurora, Illinois at Bethany of Fox Valley. One of the young people was named Ashley Tusick. She was one of the youths we had in confirmation. She played in the praise band. Now I had a great praise band. She played cello. We had a cello, viola, violin, all the saxophones, a flute, an oboe, a drum set, a bass, an electric guitar, another guitar, and singers. And yes, I had to write the music because that's not the regular orchestration for praise band. She was a helper and then a leader in VBS. She went on the canoe trips with the youth that David led in Missouri, and I did the devotions in the campfire. She was one of the youths on the ASP trip to Appalachian Service Project. Now, Appalachian Service Project gives the youth exercises to do before they go down so they begin to understand who it is that they are going to live them up and work with, not just to. And she was one of the two youths who preached at the youth service about how Appalachian Servant Project had changed her life. But you always wonder if you'll see the youth and what they'll do once they graduate. Ashley was going to be a teacher. And that first summer after graduation, after she had been one year through college, the church needed somebody to lead Vacation Bible School. She heard that call, and she became the leader to train the teachers. We had 150 kids at Vacation Bible School with teachers and kids. She did everything, and she was great, and she did help with the music, and she did that for several years, and then she came to us and said, I can't do it this year. And I went, uh-huh, why? Well, she'd signed up to be one of the leaders of the Appalachian Service Project. She was the one that took all the people's requests for their home things and all the workers that went down, matched them up, got all the supplies. She did that for about six years, and she did it full time. And then she went into teaching. Saints are interested in others and listen and then act. And a saint knows what is necessary. Again, this is one of my favorite passages. It is from Luke 10, 38. While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with everything ready for the meal. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to prepare the table all by myself? Tell her to help me. Doesn't that sound like an older sister? The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. One is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part, and it won't be taken away from her. We sit at Jesus' feet like Mary, but you know what? We are to be Martha's as well. You have to clean. You have to cook. You may have to make things hospitable. We need a balance. We need to be fed physically and spiritually, and like a beating heart, we need to come together and then expand. Come together and expand. I like the bulletin cover because it has the little white church in between the two parts. Now, it's interesting that this picture, they just picked this picture. That is Reverend David Truitt and my mother. But she always taught three and four-year-olds, so I think this must have been a vacation Bible school picture. But anyway, this is an image I see in my mind as the old white church, the one that's back on the painting. I can see it as clear as the old standpipe. I remember playing on the grass in the ice cream socials. The parsonage came down and the education unit went up. And then the new church came up facing that way. And then this was redone this way. And the middle was uh, worked on. And now what do you have? A hospitality. You have to have education. You have to have worship. 
and you have to be as hospitable and welcome people. You do VBS, you do the boxes for mission things. You support mission people to Guatemala. You are the saints. You are the ones living and working, having fun and being in mission. T. A saint is a team person. 1 John 4.19 says, we love because God first loved us. There is no I in team. But there isn't any we either. But Jesus chose 12 disciples, but he also had 70 people and others that were listening to him. He gathered people to work together. He had patience most of the time. We need to learn and relearn how to be team people by loving ourselves and learning to love others. How do we do this? In 1 Corinthians 13, there's a nice passage I would use at weddings of how we are to be. We are to understand all of those things that make us a saint. So if you put up the little thing, I hope we can read it. I want you to put your name in the blank and let's read it together. I'm sort of going to direct you like an old choir director that I am. Say your name. Barbara is patient. Barbara is kind. Barbara is, is jealous. And Dama doesn't brag. Barbara isn't arrogant. Barbara isn't rude. Barbara doesn't seek my own advantage. Barbara isn't irritable. Barbara doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Barbara is happy with truth. Barbara put ups with all things, trusts in all things. Barbara hopes for all things. Barbara doers for all things. How many of you got all of them? <laughs> Neither me. And I remember as I would do this for the wedding, people would snicker at certain things knowing that the, the wedding couple didn't have those attributes. But we aren't asked to be perfect. John Wesley said, are you moving on to perfection? Do you have some goals that you reach for? The last letter is S. A saint is someone who is sent out into the world. It doesn't mean you're sitting in a pew. The Greek word for being sent is apostle. Paul writes the gifts of the Spirit. The apostle is one who is sent to spread the message. All apostles are disciples, but not all disciples are apostles because we all have different gifts of the Spirit. And the book is called Acts, but what's its full name? Acts of the Apostles. It is those who are sent. And the one who is my hero is Barnabas. Who is he? He was born in Cyprus, a Jew, and became a Christian. His real name was Joseph, but because he was so encouraging, they called him Barnabas, son of encouragement. He is the one that sold his field and gave all the money to the uh, disciples. When Saul had his conversion and people didn't believe in him because he'd been at the stoning of Stephen, it was Barnabas who encouraged Saul as he became Paul before the council and to go on missionary journeys with him. But when Mark, John Mark, who had given up on one journey, wanted to come again, Paul said, no. Barnabas said, yeah, we've got to give him a second chance. Jesus had 12 disciples, but in the text outside of the scripture, these other 70 are somewhat named, and Barnabas is one of the 70. Barnabas is sent by the Jewish council of Antioch to see the Jews and Christians worshiping together, and he's on a fact-finding mission, open and listening, and making ethical decisions. The Jews and the Christians weren't supposed to worship together, but he said in Acts 11:23, he saw the grace of God and he rejoiced. We are all people and we are saints. We are saints to somebody and somebody is our saint. We are all moving on to perfection in different degrees. The mission of the Onalaska United Methodist Church is to make disciples for the transformation of the world. Your vision is to love unconditionally, prepare our hearts, minds, and hands, serve in all the ways we can, and celebrate God in all we do. You are saints. You are disciples. You are apostles. And you are somebody this day that God is counting on. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for all that you offer us, all that you give to us. And no matter what is going on, we are to be your apostle and somebody who follows your footsteps. Amen. Now, my first career was a music teacher. 
and some of it still shows. So as we're, um, yeah, even, anyway, the, I love the song, I am the church, you are the church, and I like the hand motions for it. There are actually 15 verses that <laughs> Avery and Marsh did, and they left out my favorite, which is printed in the bulletin. So it goes, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All around the people, all around the world, and then you take the hand of the person next to you. Yes, we're the church together. Okay? All the somebody's got it? You want them to stand? Okay. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is the people. I am the church. You are the church. job. Thank you, Barbara. And you guys can be seated. I told you this was a very full Sunday. No, no, that's good. So uh, for our prayer time today, actually, I'm going to encourage you to write your prayer requests on the blue cards and turn them in. Um, and I will lead us in a moment of silent prayer and a general prayer. Lord, you have called us together to be the church. We are so grateful for the privilege of serving you and of serving others and of continuing on our journey toward being saints of the church. Lord, we know that there are many people in this world in need. Uh, some are in our own families. Uh, some are in our communities. Some are spread out and we see or read about them in the news. Lord. This morning we bring them to you in prayer, and we ask that you would move us where we are called to go and to be your hands and feet. Help us to serve those in need. Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings you have given us as well. And Lord, on this particular Sunday, we pray for all those who have passed before us, for the ways that they have touched us and shaped us, uh, for the ways that... Uh, we honor their memories in the way that we live our lives. Lord, we lift all these things up to you, and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against them. And may not send us into temptation, but deliver us from you. The mind of the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the forever. Amen. We have a chance to share with the Lord our gifts and offerings. I'm going to ask the ushers to come around to collect them, or if you would like to give electronically, you can use the information on the screen.
O Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise, for by your will all things are created and have their being. Bless now these gifts that we offer in thanksgiving for your great faithfulness. Amen. And you may be seated. I'm going to invite our communion assistants to come forward and to prepare, uh, prepare their hands. For those who are uh, visiting today or guests among us, I uh, want to uh, share with you that the, uh, in the Methodist Church, communion is an open uh, service. You are welcome to come and participate. Um, all are welcome. You don't need to be a member of this church. If you uh, seek to encounter Jesus Christ, you are welcome to come forward this morning. You can come uh, with your hands together and receive the piece of bread and then dip that in the cup and receive both elements together. If you prefer to uh, take a piece of gluten-free bread, it's available on the altar in the middle. And if you prefer to receive uh, the juice in one of the small cups, those will be available on both sides as well. The Stephen Ministers and I will be uh, at either end of the sanctuary, so if you'd like to be uh, prayed over or anointed, you're welcome to join us for that. On the night that Jesus gave himself for us, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it and shared it with his disciples and friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to God, his Father, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for your presence here with us today in this uh, feast, as well as your presence with us in our daily walk. We are reminded that this is an anticipation of the heavenly feast that we will enjoy one day with you and in the presence of all the saints. And this morning, as we come forward uh, to receive, we're reminded that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, all those saints, all those beloved people who have gone before us, whose uh, lives and efforts have helped to inspire our faith and uh, prepare the opportunities that we have. Lord, we're reminded that you call us to be saints, that you call us to inspire others, to serve others, to be a model to others, to share our faith with others so that all might come to know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us your body and your blood so that we might be for the world your body redeemed by your blood. Through your Holy Spirit, make us one with yourself, one with each other, and one in service to all the world until you come again in final victory and we feast together at your heavenly banquet. We ask these things in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we... We're going to begin by serving those who serve us, our musicians and tech people, and then we invite you to come forward and receive. If you'd like to receive communion where you're sitting, then uh, just uh, uh, signal to us or one of the ushers and we'll bring it to you.
my favorite things about the 8.30 service is that the Packers never play at 9.30. So <laughs> we've got all the time we want. <laughs> Thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. If you would like to know more about this uh, congregation where uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants, we've been blessed by many over the years, and we in turn are called to continue that tradition of the saints and continue that great race surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Ask the folks around you. They can tell you about some of the people who blessed them on their journey, and uh, hopefully they can be a blessing to you. If you would like to get together for prayer this week, I'd be happy to spend some time with you. Just call the office and let me know. We're going to close with, uh, I sing a song of the saints of God, just two verses, and then uh, Barb will give us the benediction, and we will go forth. Thumbs up. I am somebody. I am somebody. You are somebody. You are somebody. We are the saints of the church. We are the saints of the church. Amen. Amen.